Okay, so welcome back. Let us go ahead and get ourselves started with section 14 of CEB 120C to 20C. Um, I'll apologize, my voice is a little croaky today. Sort of like a get over, I hope, uh, a cold. So I'm a little bit toxic too, so I'll warn you. When I come on nearby, like a, with a big thing of hand sanitizer right there, <laughs> anywhere, anytime I'm near you, like go ahead and like uh, thoroughly uh, protect yourself. Because uh, you don't want what I have. Uh, in terms of what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to keep on looking at the whole issue of the different search algorithms and really how we, as an overall kind of approach, can look at trying to evaluate a bunch of different forms, um, pick what we think is the best alternative, and then ultimately go through and create things that meet the input criteria that we thought were the best and evaluate those, provide visual feedback. So very much related to what's going on with assignment. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit off script today. Uh, based on sort of uh, what I've been doing with several of you during office hours. You know, because I think there's sort of a general principle behind the way to approach this uh, for the assignment in general, like how you approach this sort of design problem, which is sort of a good one to really just like focus on and kind of build organically with you out of something that like uh, we've been doing in class. So we're going to go through and uh, after we go through and choose an overall form based on sort of an evaluation, uh, I'll show you how you actually get the input values uh, or to provide the visual feedback based on the actual panels you put on the form. So where we are going overall is, let's kind of like tap out different things here. Um, in terms of the recap, we last time looked at the whole issue of the whole sloping roof and kind of testing some inputs using a list map. A lot of people are getting the idea of list maps now. List maps are actually kind of cool. They have a lot of different functions though. They're really good for evaluating input values for the overall form to sort of see you know, how well different shapes perform based on some high level metrics. You'll also find though that we use list maps to clean up lots of little things. Whenever we have groups of things and we want to, or lists of things and we want to operate on a single element at a time to clean it up or compute something, we'll use a list map. It just sort of lets you take a list of things and do something to each item in the list. Okay? which often gives you more power than just kind of one of those standard built-in functions. So list maps have a lot of kind of applicability. In terms of assignment four, we extended the due date on that. So for everyone who's got it in already, woohoo, you're in great shape. If you don't have it in yet, go ahead and try to finish up today or tomorrow. There's something like that. There's a lot of people who have different commitments that we're competing. So we're being pretty lean in terms of really how one they'll be due. But try and get everything finished up. You don't want it to kind of dragging into the weekend. It's really not something you want to kind of have if you'd have, or have hanging around. But I want to kind of look at this for just a minute in terms of thinking about really overall what we're up to here and the way you can go through and approach doing your different uh, kind of graphs. At some level, here's what we're doing. You know, we are as we're going through and trying to find an optimal form and then provide feedback or an evaluation of why we think that optimal form is so good. We go through a series of different steps, and you can almost think about organizing your dynamo graph in this way, that there's often some area where you just set all the initial conditions and inputs. I usually put that way over on the left end. It's kind of way over there where it's very easy to spot. And then a lot of what we've been doing is setting up a big old loop to go through and evaluate the alternatives. Okay, and as we're evaluating all the alternatives, it really has two different sort of key aspects to it. There's the whole idea that you need to generate the alternative, so whether that's you need to go through and for an input value that continues to change, uh, kind of read past some of the curves with a dynamo, or whether you need to set the value of some parameter on an object in Revit. You know, either way, you're basically generating some new alternative to be evaluated. So you're either generating a new surface in Dynamo, or you're generating a new form in Revit and reading the surface off of it. But in any case, you're going through and generating something. And the big difference here is, if we're going to go through and do it in Revit and depend on Revit and count on Revit, we always need those two different kind of key things. We need the transaction start and the transaction end. because that's what really gets Revit to do the updating. And the reason we need those is we have to actually kind of throttle Revit and slow it down and say, hey, don't proceed until you have updated that, because the Dynamo scripting will race ahead and kind of pick up values that aren't necessarily uh, accurate yet. 
So in Revit, we obviously transactions start and start, start and end. In Dynamo, we don't have to do that because in Dynamo, just as soon as the math goes into sort of recomputing the curve, you know, that curve you're picking up is accurate. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Then we went through and we computed some evaluation values from each, each alternative. And we've been doing that a couple of different ways. We looked at sort of the whole directness values, which is, that's the whole kind of dot product of the vectors. And that's actually kind of an okay way to approach it. It's sort of very quick to do something like that because it's just a lot of math and geometry and it's sort of easy to go through. And I'd like to uh, do that quickly. We also went ahead and looked at doing that with uh, insulation values. And that's a little bit longer in the process because every time and for every panel it has to go through and do some analysis over all the different days of the year or whatever is within your time period. So it's a little more work to set it all up. But at the tail end of the whole process, we really get very similar sort of numbers. We went through and either computed kind of a total insulation or a density of the insulation or we have sort of some total directness value. But we just have a value, some value we're going to use to say that, hey, this form cumulatively is better than the other forms. So we just want to understand 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, different alternatives for the form, how good they are. So it's all about just kind of computing those evaluation values. And then we went through the whole idea of going through and choosing the best alternative. So that's where we went through and did like a list maximum, something like that. And typically went through and we went looking to pick the matching input value. Okay, and we've done some different little bits of infrastructure there about lists, matching key values, and stuff like that to go through and find that. But the whole goal of that was really to say, given that we computed all these values, really which input was it that gave us that? And then finally, we go back and we generate the best alternative. So we do the same thing all over again, but we do it with one specific value so that we can then have that overall form that has the best shape or that we evaluate to be the best. Where this gets a little confusing, and where I realize it's kind of confusing in the way we've been, I've been approaching it or laying it out for you, is that after that point, then we often go through and panelize the surfaces. Okay. And what we had to do for the assignment was first go through and panelize and evaluate using the directness values. And you know, when we start thinking about doing the list map, <coughs> where the confusion comes in is that step doesn't come until later. Yeah, because you want to basically use the list map to figure out what the input value should be and then panelize it as opposed to panelizing right off. So where the confusion comes often is that, like for this panelization of the services, like, you know, you don't need to do it on every iteration, okay, unless you're using the panel values. And I'm going to propose that we do something a little bit different. Rather than going ahead and necessarily using all the panel values for every evaluation, let's just use values off of the surface because we can evaluate the entire surface without breaking it into 100 different panels. So we can just use the surface to go through and figure out what the form is. Then we can panelize it and ultimately evaluate each of those panels once and only once because I don't want to do it on every iteration. On every iteration it would take a long time. So we'll basically go through and basically reshape the surface, we'll panelize the surface, and then we'll provide visual feedback by basically going and getting the evaluation values on each of the individual panels. And that's where the, the, the hitch in this comes. It's really kind of that separation of going through and looping to find the, the initial values within Dynamo, and then later on going through and panelizing it and providing the visual feedback. Okay, so I'll go through and we'll do something, again, just a little bit off script today, but sort of using one of the examples to sort of demonstrate that, but I think it's the same principle that will come in very handy for most of you, as when I was working in office hours with different people trying to solve the problem and really kind of work through it. It really came down to this last two steps in terms of really how they apply to the whole process where a lot of the confusion came. So I wanted to go ahead and start there, just in terms of uh, yeah, giving you some feedback. 
Okay, so to demonstrate all this and really kind of drive that stuff home, I'm going to return back to the old solar analysis parametric surface, which by now should be looking pretty familiar. So I'm going to open up 14.1 and we'll start with that as our initial point. And oh, let me go into Revit. We're even going to open one of the very late ones in the process. We're going to open ones where we've already gone through the solar nodes all set up. It's doing what it's doing, stuff like that. So let us just take a look here. So I think within here, we're going to be going, jumping in at step four, where we've already created a loft of surface. Check. We panelized the surface, although I panelized it initially. You might remember I sort of pulled my panelization off to the side, because I really don't want to panelize every evaluated form. I really just want to evaluate the surface. So pull that off to the side, we'll do the solar analysis, figure out what we think the optimum rotation is, the optimum waviness is, something like that. And then use a list map to go through and test that. But then after we've gone through and done that, we're going to add a few new steps. We're going to go through and pick the best. <coughs> we're going to use that input value to regenerate form, panelize that form, and then finally evaluate each of the panels and colorize them based on their evaluations. So that's where I'm going for the first part of this. So come on over and if you can open up a nearby, let's go into Let's say 14.1, and oh, we'll just get the panelized first surface first. Then I think it's going to be oh, 4B or something like that. We'll take a look. Okay, so far so good. Oops, don't do that. You. And now let's go over to Dynamo. It's interesting. I was noticing on some people's machines it says Dynamo 1.0.0, and I'm thinking that's awfully precise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. hmm. Let's see if we can come out here and find. We'll find the all purpose. Uh, 14 watt. Let's go through, let's do the 4B. Let me kind of pop open the script. We're just going to take a look at what's happening here. So at a high level, let's see what's happening here. I have some different things. the stuff up top is really just taking that surface and panelizing it. This is what I'll call the inputs that I tend to keep way over here. This information up here is all about panelizing the final form, the rectangular seams panel, four by six, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. This part over here is surfaces, divide the surface into UV or quad grid the face. That's all just going to be useful for the panelization. So. If you want to, just go ahead and pull that over to the right. We're not going to use it just yet. I'm just going to go ahead and use that a little bit later. Okay, so let's go back into just generating the alternatives and evaluating them. Okay, so for this surface, where we had left off is I'd set up the weather conditions and I'd set up the solar time. Okay, that's something I can go ahead and keep outside the list map because I don't want to keep on rereading it every time on every iteration. It's not going to change. So if you don't want it to be reread every time, keep it outside and keep it in. If you do want it to change every time, okay, put it inside the list. But keeping it outside is just going to 
make it very efficient. Then I'm going to go through here and say that I'm going to list map. In terms of the list map functions, oh, I have different things available here. I'm going to go through, in this case, if I'm going 0 through 30 and I leave project rotation open, it's going to do different project rotations, always recording the average cumulative insulation. If I want to go through and change the length of the surface or some other thing like the, the waviness or something like that, I again will just put that outside so I can change that. So for example, Let's go ahead and just open this solar test rotation or surface test rotation parameter. Edit that custom node. You'll see inside the node, we have all our good solar analysis stuff going on in here with the different inputs. This also has the infrastructure up top. Let me see if I can get to that. to go through and create the surface. So whatever I want to put in as inputs, I just need to sort of pull out as an input. At the tail end of basically creating my surface, I am just lofting my surface. That happens right here, creating a lofted surface. So whether I'm feeding in the length of the input and I'm varying rotation, or if I wanted to go through and change, for example, the waviness in the middle and have that as an input, I could do that. But basically, I want to have those kind of pulled in as inputs so that they can be inputs to the list map so that every iteration can go through and change those things. Because this is Dynamo, and we're just doing it in Dynamo, and we're generating the curves there, we don't need the transaction start, transaction end. When we do it with a Revit object, we need the transaction start, set the parameter, transaction in. Okay, so super. This is actually looking pretty good. Let me go ahead and I'll just even put another input in there. Actually, I should warn you, as Diana and I are working with this, we sort of found that this is very important over here in terms of what's happening at the tail end right here. And this actually let me go through and fix it because I think it's wrong right now. This length of surface and the input values Often there's no declaration of what kind of variable it is. And then it's just sort of assumed to be a number of, whatever it is, it's choice to make it out of, as it goes. In this case, like the surface, it's interesting, it's showing variable with a list following it. So it thinks I'm going to feed in the list of variables, which isn't actually right. So this is one where I'm going to go through and just change it to be back to a var. Okay. And Sometimes that'll help things out. A lot of times when we've been working with different people, as things get passed in and passed out of the nodes, if things turn into lists that we didn't think should be lists, and they should be values, it's all determined by, there's basically the name of the variable and the declaration about what type of variable it is. So that's just gonna be a single value. So if I want to create another input to go through and change the number amount of waviness, I'm just going to put another input in here. I'll just call it number of middle waves. And if I make it just a var, okay. so I can swap that in here as opposed to um, the number of waves right there. That's just an input. Now, for all the different inputs, the idea is my function just has really a single open variable. So if I wanted to change the length of the surface, I could use that. If I wanted to change the number of waves, I could change that. If I wanted to change the rotation, I could do that. Each of the different inputs are possibilities. If you want to change two things at once, we'll talk about that later today, about how you feed pairs of things to it. But for the most part, you give it different inputs, which are things that you're going to allow to change. We'll lock the surface. That will regenerate it. We'll evaluate it down over here. And then at the tail end of all that, what did we do? We decided to go through and just take all those different grid points, okay, flatten them out. In this case, I'm just averaging them. Okay, and there's a lot of different things we could do. With. We're doing a density and multiplying by the area. Obviously, we go through the average insulation across there right now. Okay, so that's going to give me my evaluation number. 
really any of the outputs can be evaluation numbers. You only get one output, though. When you do a list map, you only get the one thing that you're pulling out of it. Okay? Later on, if we want to use this very same function as something to generate the form, then we can pull any of those different outputs out of it. But for now, and the list map is really the one item that we're going to pull out. So if I'm going to pull out average cumulative insulation, that's going to be the value. So let me save this. Come back over here. You see I now have my uh, number of middle waves in there. So I better plug that because right now project rotation is open, number of middle waves is open. Either that or if I try to run this right now, it'll tell me it's, you know, it has two open functions. Okay? So if I want to vary the number of waves or vary the project rotation, either one of those, I'll just choose. For right now, let's put it as a code block. I'll say there's going to be five waves in the center. But again, to make it a little bit easier on yourself, go through and do this. Take that guy. And that little code block, which you know exactly what it means right now for the next three minutes, okay, is going to be incredibly obvious to you. But it's like number of waves in the middle of surface. Put them somewhere really obvious for you. In fact, you might even really want go through here and just make a group out of all those things. So kind of my input parameters for the shape. Actually, link the surface should be in there too. Let me pull that up too. I'll add it into the group. But go ahead and be really obvious about that. The problem with so many Dynamo graphs is that really, you know, 10 minutes from now, after you're far on to some other problem, you can't remember what this little crease did. So leave yourself a lot of breadcrumbs to go through and figure it out. So great. We're going to evaluate those. We're going to get all those different list map values. That is fine. And based on that, we're going to pick some maximum. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just run this thing. See, I'm going to basically pick out the average, average cumulative insulation values. Again, I'm going to go really sl you know, small here. Just go from 0, 10, 20, 30, and 5. Even that's four values. In order to figure out what's going on, I probably don't need all four. So go ahead and be conservative as you're testing. Maybe three would do it. Even two would do it. Go ahead and limit that down. You can always raise it up later. Let's give it a run. So what this one is doing is, so far, it's just generating some dynamo curves. It's not actually going through and doing much in Revit, although in Revit there's a preview kind of hanging around out there. So this should go pretty fast because it's not regenerating a lot in Revit. When we panelize the surface, so it will. It still is going to go through and do three different solar evaluations, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. It's a ready. Is anyone following along? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Let me know when yours hit it. Yeah, mine was fast. Yours was fast? Mm -hmm. Mine is slow. Do you have several different values coming out of your list map? Uh, uh, three functions, four functions. Do I Let's see what you got here. Oh, you might have too many open variables. Yeah, Let's go ahead and see. So project rotation, oh, and length One, of surface. Two, three, four. Oh, because I, I added more things here. Yeah, yep. so go ahead and put in some code blocks there to fill yeah. in some numbers there. Okay, because you only want a single input. Yeah. That one, this looks like, like lunchbox isn't loaded or something like that. No. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> you know when you plot the x, y, and z coordinates, 
Yeah? If you do lowercase, it doesn't work. Oh, it has to be the plus. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's very, it's very fussy. So I was screwed up. I spent an hour just getting because you had lowercase x. Mm -hmm. It was because I wasn't flipping the negative values because I was using lowercase x y z. Okay, I'll put a watch on this. I feel for you because it looks like it's working, but it's just not. And then that really messes you up. Okay, so let's watch these values. Okay, so you see I got some different values here. Go with corresponding to 0, 10, 20. It looks like, well, it's interesting. The highest may actually be the 10 right now. We'll sort of see. 410, 483, 410, 550. At least for me in my study. Okay, but let's go ahead and mathematically teach it how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let's get the maximum of those values, and I'll do that pick to sort of find which input value gave us that maximum. And then we'll use that to regenerate the surface. So I'll say list maximum. And again, whether you need to max or min it just sort of depends on what you're trying to solve for. Do my little list max. Then what I'm going to basically do is try to find that thing. You know, oh, is it list? Is it matched by key values? There it is, matched with key values. I'm so glad we changed that the other day in terms of, OK, yeah. I'm basically going to match the maximum against the key values. The key values are going to be all the results of a list map, OK? And then the items that have these keys are the list of the input values. So I'm getting good at this, I hope. Let's see. I say the item to match is the maximum. The keys to match against are all the different returned items. And the list of items that have these keys is the input values. OK, so with any luck, when we run that, we should go through and get a value of, I believe, 10. Excellent. Okay, super. Now, in the spirit of being really clean about all this, I go ahead and even sort of put that in a nice little block too. Because I'm going to say a little create a group action. Okay, find the And why do I do that? Only because in my small brain, I cannot remember things like this more than five minutes at a time. So it's good to kind of keep that documented. It's also good if you need to move it all around, they stay together. If you need to delete it, you can delete them all at once. Groups are your friends. So go ahead and do something like that. So now, we are, if we think about where we are in the overall process, we've used the list map, we picked the best input value, so super. Now we're going to go through and use that input value to generate the form that we're going to panelize. Okay. And here was the trick. The trick that almost works, it doesn't quite work, but we'll try to see if we can make it work better for us. The deal is the function that I want to generate that optimal value is actually really, really similar to this function. It's incredibly similar to that function. Yeah. It has, as opposed to an input of product rotation being a variable, it has a specific value you want to put in as that. So a lot of times we go through and just use that very same function as the way to go through and generate the final surface. So if I took that same function, I weathered it, all that stuff stayed the same, and I plugged in the project rotation, it would give me one surface, okay, and the average cumulative insulation values for that whole surface. Okay, that's kind of cool. So let's go ahead and do that, but then we're going to change it around a little bit. Actually, let me do this. 
Let me recommend, I'm going to show you a better way to do it, hopefully, than, because uh, we're going to change the function. I don't necessarily want to change the functionality of the original function. So rather than going through and editing it this way, I'm going to close that up right there. I'm going to try opening it. And the reason is I'm going to do a save as on it. And if I just edit it and save as, it changes this one too. But I really want to make a second function which is similar but not quite the same. So do you want to save your changes? We can. doesn't really matter. I'm going to go out and grab, I believe it's surface test rotation parameter. Open that up. And here's the actual function. I'm going to do a save as now and say that, hey, it's going to be surface, and it's going to be not test rotation parameter. Okay, it's going to like, okay, what is it? It's really build using a single. Using a specific rotation. How about that? So. I'm just doing a save as, because I want to be really clear about the difference between the two. So I got two of them. And the reason that opening it and saving as worked better, let's see if it worked. Yep. This one is still nice and clean. I didn't compromise it, but I have my new one hanging around that I can use. And here's what I want to do. Come back out a little bit. I want to say, hey, let's go through and see if I can find it out there. Build using a specific value. Pop it over here. I'll zoom on in. And we are going to use it. And what we're going to use it to do is actually generate that single surface. But I'm actually going to change it around a little bit too. So some things that we need to go through and uh, add to it are we need to fill in the weather and the time study, all that stuff. So let's see if we can go out and get the weather and the time study. Here comes the weather. Here's the time frame. The length of the surface, I'm just going to use the same length that I used before, which is this one. Oh, well, not with the number of weightiness. Length of the surface is right above it, and that's the number of waves. Okay. But now, instead of having that open value for the project rotation, what I'm going to do is actually use this value. So it should generate a surface just for that. Okay, so, so far so good. This is gonna go through and generate that. Now, as we're working along though, we may wanna go through and do a little uh, change around here because here's what's going on. The old function gave us the average cumulative insulation for the overall surface, okay? And really what I would like to do this time is I would like to go through and Analyze that surface and actually get the insulation values for each of the different surfaces. So I'd like to get back a whole bunch of different surfaces and a whole bunch of different insulation values that I can then use to you know, analyze. Okay. All right, to do the colorization. So what we're going to do is just modify this function a little bit right here to go through and use those things. So some of the things I'm going to need are I'm going to need my uh, family type. I need the panel that's coming in. I need the number of rows. I'm going to need the number of uh, columns. You can see all of those are kind of tied up right over here. So if you want to, you could just go ahead and copy all of this into the node, 
We could make this its own custom node if we wanted to. A lot of ways we could go through and approach this. But basically, you already have the logic here. In fact, even if we want to just take the surface out, we could just go ahead and do this and return the surface and plug it in right here. And that would actually work too. Okay. So if you want to do that, that is A-OK. -okay. And that'll panelize the surface. No insulation values yet, but hey, that's at least a starting point if you want to see what a panelized surface looks like at that rotation. So that's cool. This one over here, that was just another variation on the function. So I'm just going to take that surface and panelize it. So again, we can make that a custom node or not. What we want to do to actually, though, um, evaluate all those different panels is well, it's kind of interesting. This is the funny part about it in terms of blah, 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 the quads. You know, I'm trying to think about where to do this because really what I want to do is I want to do all these quads from the grid okay, and really make all the little subsurfaces and evaluate them too. So I'm sort of torn about the way to do this because really what I want to do is take those and do an evaluation on them. Basically, I have all these quads. Okay, these quads are actually going through and creating the adaptive components. But what I really want to do is go through and take all those quads and make surfaces out of them and evaluate them also. Okay. So we can do that in a number of different ways. Let's do this, I'll think, probably the cleanest way. Let me take this node, the surface build using the rotation unit a specific value. Let's just go through and we are, and for this node, let me just go ahead and clean it out so that it really has only one thing going on, which is really, it's just going to take this value and return the surface. So I could try to load this all into a single node, or I could go through and do these two separate nodes. What I almost want to do is separate this part off and then use it a little bit differently. So what do I want to do? Hmm. Any preference? Do you want to see me? We do it either one or two ways. I could break up the surface inside the node and kind of return the values here, or I can use this node just to generate the surface and then break them up in a separate node. Could go either way. I'm very open to either, sort of, either suggestion. Any preference? Just generally confused? Break up into a second. Okay, I'll do it that way. Then we can use I, I think it's cleaner that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's more reusable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do that. Let's take this node. I'll even say here, I'm just going to get rid of all that stuff over here. You're going to encourage me to do good programming, which is a good thing. Yeah. <clears throat> let's make this very modular. Sometimes it's tough to see whether these are like custom nodes or nodes like packages. You know what I mean when you see something? Oh, yeah. Like it's really hard to know where things came it from. It seems cool to collapse everything to a node, but then sometimes it becomes more. It gets you in trouble. More opaque. Exactly. And then if something breaks, Should we do the open method though? Because then it's, oh, it only appears once in the So here it is. So I'm only using it once right now. So yeah. this is, given a length and given a waviness, it's going to generate a surface. Okay, so super. That's cool. That's a very nice kind of node all to itself. Let me save that away. Put that over here. So it's just going to generate a surface. That's kind of OK. We can use that surface and subdivide the surface. part down here because this is not really necessary over here. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you may notice that this surface built for a specific rotation, we could actually even go into the original node and swap it in there so that it's really the same chunk of code in both places. You don't have to, but what I would say that you could do is we can go back into this node And if 
this one. And really, that custom node is this part. So if I wanted to, I could go through and say sample build using a specific and just put that in the place of all of this code in the green. It's really the same sort of thing. So if you want to be very contained about it, you can do that or keep it separate. I'll just pull over the length of the surface, the number of waves. It's outputting a surface, so what am I going to do with that surface? Pass it on out. Also pass it in down here as the analysis surface. Okay, so that's really about the same. I'm going to remove that. So this is probably a nice example of relatively clean coding in that you now have one modular kind of thing. If we decide to change the surface anywhere, it's going to change it both for the evaluation surfaces as well as for the other surfaces. So that's not too awfully bad. Let me save this away. Come back over here. Still looks about the same over there. Now, We've been doing some mucking around, so uh, there's nothing like a little test action to go through and make sure that we haven't broken something along the way. So let's go ahead and run this again, just to make certain. I want to make sure that this node that I just mucked around with didn't change very much, or the results of it didn't change very much. So looks like I'm still getting the values. OK, that's OK. I didn't break anything too badly. Okay, so we got a surface coming in here. Let's see what's going on here. This is complaining a little bit that something doesn't really match. We're gonna try and panelize it. It's probably gonna say something like one of the inputs doesn't match, something doesn't work. Let's go ahead and just see what's going on here in terms of the output of this because we really hope it is returning a surface, but you're never quite sure. So let's do a watch on it. Okay, looks like a null is coming back. That's not very good looking. So again, let's figure out why that is. Looks like it worked in terms of finding the keys. Oops, it's right here. When I changed it around, length of surface. Oh, I'm being kind of a dummy in the scheme of things. In the I need to go through and actually fill in the uh, like uh, the input value for the rotation. Well, actually, I don't for that. No, that should be okay. I'm going to use that rotation. It's part of the analysis. That should be okay. I don't need that yet. In terms of length of the surface, that should be good. Let's just search. I'm not sure why it's giving a null. Let's take a look. If we edit the custom node, you got that, you got that. You got the surface by loft, surface. The general way of debugging these is to put some watches in here. So, let's see if our list looks good. What I'm doing is just copying and pasting the watches around because I just want to sort of see at a high level, where is it breaking? Come back over here. Okay. The sad thing is you can't actually run these from the uh, little uh, subgraph. You have to go through and go back to the main and run. <laughs> what kind of low?
I got lots of nulls coming in, so what's the story on all these nulls? Let's go through and start with, even at the beginning, if it's having trouble with, let's see if the input values are coming right. That's a good place to start in terms of whether or not they're getting the right values. All these nulls are not good. I guess the point that I drive home about what I'm doing right now and the difficulty we're seeing is that a lot of times the thing that broke isn't the thing that you would suspect is the thing that broke. So take nothing for granted. A little watch action over here. Okay, let's try that. Again, I'm just watching all the variables. There's some problem in my node. Not sure what it is. We'll try it again. Wow. Looks like that for my length of surface I'm plugging in the weather station ID, and for my number of mill waves I'm putting in the time study. Okay, that would certainly mess things up. So as I was working around outside, I must have been uh, a little sloppy. Oh, I know why. Because it just pulled the values from the other node. Okay, no worries, I just need to clean that up. What happens is, let's see if I can figure this out. If you look at the inputs, notice on the old node, the old node that we sort of made it from, it was one and two. So it's using them as one and two. It automatically hooked those together. That's not very good at all. So let's just go ahead and hook the right things in. We'll say you over here. We will do the number. Yeah, I just got the wrong inputs plugged in there. Check this out. That's looking a lot better. I got a surface. The surface came through. If we go through and look at all this, and we say that it's going to quad, that it quads some nice points on the surface, it looks like it did. Did it go through and place some adaptive components on the surface? It looks like it did. OK, so I am back in pretty good shape. So I've panelized the surface. Okay, so far so good. So now if I go back over to Revit in the background. I have a panelized approximation of my surface. Notice the panelization is not as good as the actual surface. The actual surface has all these fantastic waves and my panelization only has like six panels to try and approximate that. Yeah, that's all the issue of just how many panels you want to break it into. As you get finer and finer, the more closely you can approximate the surface. So since I only have four by six, if I really wanted to try and capture those eight or nine different waves, I would need a lot more panels to allow it to break. Okay, so let me go just a little further and then we'll take our break. But the idea is I've panelized it. So in the scheme, I am now use that input value to generate the form. Okay, we've done that, and we've catalyzed that form. So we're really all the way down to here. So the very last thing is, hey, I got all those panels. Those panels are great. You know, I know how to do directness values on the panels. You did that already. You had that node hanging around. I sure would like to get the solar insulation values and use that to color the panels instead. Okay, so that's a very small bump from where you are right now. You already have a fantastic function sitting around somewhere that says, if I get a bunch of directness values, I'm going to scale them from 0 to 1 and apply some colors based on that. Super. So what I would really like to do is just get a bunch of insulation values for all the panels instead of directness values and colorize based on those instead. Okay. And you actually have a function that can do that. Let's go over and take a look. So. You might remember that our little insulation computer right down here. This beautiful little function, okay, 
it can take a number of different surfaces. So that's pretty promising. Hmm. So if I want to evaluate all the different surfaces, what I got to do is just feed it a list of surfaces as opposed to a single surface. Okay? And then I get the average cumulative insulation for each of those surfaces. Okay? And then use that number to go through and uh, report back really what the insulation value is that's going to be used for colorization. Okay, so not too bad. What we're going to do is once again use this node and just repurpose it a little bit. So go ahead and close it. Just so that if you make the change without keeping it, without closing it, what's going to happen is it'll make it in the original one. And I don't want to do that. I want to go through and make a change in a copy of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is really open my surface test rotation parameter. going to complain at me because there's probably something about confusion about what's open and not. If it's going to do that to me, I'm going to just going to close Dynamo right now and then reopen it because I think that it's just going to, it's confused about the file. Let us go back. I'm going to again open that 4B that we've been working on. See what we got, and then we're going to open that custom node, and we're just going to change it around ever so slightly. So here's the in my new version of the node. What I'd like to do is just basically get a list of surfaces and return a whole bunch of insulation values for each of the surfaces. The color came back. Imagine that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, I'm in four. I should be on four B. You're correct. Five B is where we. Five B is actually where we started. It looks pretty. Okay, okay here we are in four B. So, here's what's going on. I want to do two things. I want to a get a bunch of surfaces out of all those panels, and b come up with a new improved sort of a function that really just takes surfaces in and then like uh, goes through and evaluates them. Not bad spelling there. Okay, so here's how we can do that. Let's go through and open that node. Again, I'm gonna open it separately. I'm gonna do a little save as action. I'll say surfaces evaluate insulation on each surface. Let's think about what's coming in. So coming in this time, we don't need to go through and generate the surface. Actually, we could do it if we want to keep it all in here, but we're going to go through and just say that we're going to go through and get in some surfaces. Now, if I ask Diana about this, she'd tell me that since it's a list. I might need to put those little curly brackets in there, or those square brackets in there, just to make sure that it thinks it's a list. If there's any place that this is going to go wrong, it's probably right there in terms of that. So I'm going to give it a list of surfaces. Okay. I'm We're still. Why you have to type in that back to the variable, the VAR. So as an input, it, in order for it to be a variable so that you can evaluate well, it using list map, you well, have to. What's going to happen is, by default, it tries to guess what you're feeding it. And it tries to do its best job of understanding what it is. This is actually being very explicit in saying it's not a single value, it's a list of values. OK. That's like a hidden gotcha. Didn't used to be that way, but it's really become more important lately. OK. 
Okay, so we're going to go through, we're going to have some surface values to evaluate. We have the weather, the time study, the rotation. That all looks good. And what we're going to do is take those surfaces to evaluate and plug them in as the analysis surfaces. Other than that, the node looks pretty much the same. All the stuff inside solar radiation that isn't changing. We're just going to say, as opposed to going through and feeding in, you know, a single surface, we're going to feed in a bunch of different surfaces. And because of that, what's going to happen is over here, down at the tail end, I probably have a little bit of work to do on the cleanup side, in terms of that math average. But we'll save that for just a little bit later. Okay. Save that one away. And then let's go back to the high level. Let's make some surfaces to feed that. Then we'll take our break and we'll do the final little thing on the whole thing. But let's take these surfaces and really I need now to feed in a bunch of surfaces. So let's kind of find where that is. I've made this nice simple surface. I've subdivided the surface right up here. I have all sorts of different quad points over there. And now I have a new function. Right there. It's looking for some surfaces to evaluate. So the question is, how can we make some surfaces? And we actually have some surfaces out here. We have actually some starts of surfaces right here. Here we made some quads, some quads that define the boundary corners of all the different panels. And if we actually went through and made those quad points into surfaces, we'd actually be in great shape. Okay. So let's find where this is. Oh, it's like I'm always surface by patch. There's always That's lofting by patch surface by filling in the interior of a closed boundary. That, well, I can go through and say if I have those, let me try polygon by points. Then try surface again by patch. I think this will actually do it. What that's going to do is we're going to start with taking the four different points, okay, turning them into a polygon that sort of traces the boundary and then making a surface out of that boundary. So I think that'll actually do it. Let's come through and just run that so far just to kind of see how we're doing. I know it's not all completely working, but I want to see if my quad points are actually going to generate a whole series of polygons and ultimately generate a whole bunch of uh, patches. But it's taking, it's going to run a little while now because it's the first time through, so it's reactivating everything. If we reopen it. So if you want to catch back up, because I know I've been doing a lot of stuff, and if you if you dropped off somewhere along the way, as soon as you fall behind, you can't catch back. Okay, let's see what's going on. We're running. We should be doing it for zero ten twenty. We should be finding ten. Hopefully, then we're going to divide it into those surfaces. working, let me just sort of get back to the overall script. So picking the best input value after doing the list map, using that input value to generate the surface, the new surface, panelizing it, and then finally now evaluating them. So that's where we are in the process, is right at the tail end. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. 
I have a whole bunch of polygons. That's not looking too bad. I have a whole bunch of surfaces here. Again, that's not looking too bad. So what I have now is I have taken all the different quads which generated the panels, and now I have, I should have six lists of four surfaces. Okay, since I should have one surface corresponding to each of those panels. Okay, so six lists of four surfaces. We're doing pretty good. Now, I could feed that in to the uh, surfaces to evaluate, and that'll work just fine. What I did, Caesar and I had this problem as we were working. It's like there's already hierarchy here. There's a lot of hierarchy over here already. So if I don't want to have all that hierarchy going in, I can flatten this list before I send it in. That way I just evaluate each of the 24 surfaces individually. We don't sort of have to worry about the hierarchy there. And that's what I'm going to start by doing. I'm going to say, let's just do a list flatten. Okay, as you look at our list, how many levels do you think I need to flatten it? Just one. Just one. Excellent. And if you happen to like the function that's just called flatten as opposed to list flatten, would that work? It actually, it would. It, it just flattens completely. Super. Okay. We are ready to go through and evaluate those. We have some other values to fill in. We have, oh, the project rotation. The project rotation, you might remember, is over here somewhere. This is the one that we were going to match against. We have the weather and time. Let's pop those in there. And then we'll take our break. I'll let that run. Here's weather. Here's time. Let me save that away. And theoretically, we should get a whole bunch of average cumulative insulation values as opposed to just a single one. So let's go ahead and save that. Okay, I'm going to run it. And let's go ahead and take our break. When we come on back, we will do a little fixing around the edges. But uh, for the most part, I think we should be done. Well, it came back awfully quick. <laughs> but in any case, let's take our break, break and we'll, uh, we'll fix that list up. Come back in five.